the first known life form on Earth? Some scientists believe it was the prokaryote. This simple single-celled organism is thought to have popped up on Earth around 3.5 billion years ago. Then they evolved, and cyanobacteria appeared. Those were likely the first organisms to use photosynthesis and to produce oxygen, which greatly improved Earth's atmosphere and environment. But how did we get from that single cell to octopi with lots of arms and mammals with all their organs? Well, it's because of evolution. It can make animals and plants very complex. But does it ever reverse itself? Sure, some scientists call this going backwards. But it's not really like that. Evolution doesn't go back and repeat what it did before. Regressive evolution means that animals or organisms lose some of the complexity they had in the past. A good example of this is the mycozoan, which is a tiny parasite that doesn't have a mouth, nervous system, or gut. They don't have a lot of DNA material either. These parasites were thought to be simple one-celled organisms, but then scientists found out that there were actually animals that had lost many of their features because they didn't need them anymore. So it really does look like they went back to a simpler stage in their evolution. Let's not get too excited though. Evolution doesn't work like updates on your computer. You can't just cancel the latest update if you don't like it. Let's look at cave-dwelling fish, which most of the time have no eyes. This absence of eyes doesn't mean these animals are going back to a time when their ancestors didn't have eyes. Instead, the process through which their eyes had been developing stopped before finishing. More so, if some of the complexity of an animal is lost, there may be other unseen features that develop instead. In cavefish, the loss of eyes may be compensated by other useful traits, like organs that can sense vibrations in the dark. These organs may be found in the empty eye sockets of the fish. The reason why evolution does not go back to previous stages is simple. Changes lead to other changes. This makes it difficult to undo a specific update. For example, when cavefish developed eyes, it also led to some changes in the structure of their skull. Just because they don't need the eyes that much anymore, it doesn't cause the fish to lose their eye sockets as well. Also, evolution does not have a goal of creating more complex animals. It only favors features that make an organism fit better in its environment. Losing more complex features can make an organism better suited for its new environment. It's more efficient to stop wasting energy on organs you don't really use. When you look at it this way, evolution is always moving forward. It's simply selecting features, some new, some older, that improve the fitness of the organism to its home. There's one specific group of animals that really dived into reverse evolution. They are called marine tetrapods and include whales, dolphins, seals, and sea turtles. They've really changed a lot over the last 350 million years, moving from sea to dry land and back to sea. Each time they moved, they had to change the way they lived, their body shape, and the way they used their senses. Scientists have done a new study and looked at lots of information about how land animals changed to be able to live in the ocean. Some 250 million years ago, land animals started to move back into the ocean. This happened after the Great Permian Extinction, also known as the most severe mass extinction event in our planet's history. Lots of animals were lost during that time, both in the ocean and on land. It took Earth a staggering 10 million years to recover. Some animals, like snakes, have even gone back and forth between living in the ocean and on land multiple times. The study also mentions that elephants might have lived in the water for some time, but it's not clear if it was the ocean or just fresh water. The way evolution works in nature is way more complex than simply going back and forth between features. Take, for instance, convergent evolution, which is when different creatures evolve independently of each other but end up having similar traits. While we're still looking at creatures in the ocean, let's stop and compare sharks and dolphins. It's the easiest way to see how convergent evolution works. 
Judging solely by their appearance, they look very similar. Creatures that live in the water with some species having roughly the same size. Well, as surprising as it might be, sharks and dolphins are mostly unrelated. Sharks are fish, and about 40% of them reproduce by laying eggs. They've evolved to have the ability to sense blood in the water to feed themselves. Dolphins, on the other hand, are mammals. Some are actually friendly and have a way more interesting social life than sharks. Just look at bottlenose dolphins. These quirky creatures have their own special sounds that they use similarly to how humans use their names. They sort of sound like whistles. They use these types of sounds to introduce themselves, and they can also learn other names so they can better communicate with each other. Sure, sharks and dolphins did have a common ancestor, but it lived in the sea almost 300 million years ago. Charles Darwin was probably one of the most skilled scientists when it comes to evolution. He was amazed by the different types of animals and plants that existed on Earth. Scientists estimate there are about 1 trillion different species all together on our planet. But how long did it take for these species to develop? The answer is different for most creatures, and it depends on their environment. For some, it happens quickly, and the changes can be seen throughout a person's lifetime. For others, it takes millions of years. The rate at which new species form depends on how quickly a creature reproduces. Bacteria, for instance, can reproduce very quickly, so they change into new types in a short amount of time. Speciation is when a group within a species separates from other members of its species and develops its own unique characteristics. This can happen quickly in insects, like apple maggot flies that used to eat hawthorn plants. Now, there's another variation of the same species that eats apples too. They are considered two different groups and are the first step in becoming a new species. This can also happen quickly in birds. A finch can move to a new island and breed with a native bird, creating a new group of birds that are different from both parents. But it's not always clear if these new groups will remain different over a long period of time. The creatures that broke the record in new species creation live in Africa's Lake Victoria. They are called Kitchlid fish. 300 different species very quickly developed from one single type. This happened in less than 12,000 years. Which may seem like a lot at first, but to understand how fast this was, we should look at animals that had to change due to some physical barriers. For example, snakes called boas in America and pythons in Africa and Asia became different species after their continents separated. This took millions of years. But if evolution always makes sure animals have the best features available, how come some animals go extinct sooner than others? The blue whale has been around for a long time, about 4.5 million years. But the Neanderthals only existed for a short while, only about a few hundred thousand years. There is no simple answer to this question either. How long most species last before they go extinct depends on the animal itself and the time period. We know that mammals generally lasted for 1 to 2 million years. But in the Cenozoic era, the past 65 million years, mammals have lasted for an average of 3.21 million years, with bigger mammals lasting longer than smaller ones. Invertebrates, like insects and worms, can last even longer, between 5 to 10 million years on average. We can't know for sure how many animals are disappearing at the moment, because we don't know how many animals there are in the first place. Many creatures, mostly bugs, haven't even been named yet. So if we don't know they exist, we won't know they're going extinct. It's also hard to tell if an animal is really gone, because sometimes they're just hiding. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.